Good day. This is Brother Medina for Tuesday Seventh Day Adventist. And please let us start with a word of prayer. Gracious loving Father, please be with us as we enter into your word. Bless everyone listening. Help them to see the beauty of the truth and help them to submit to the truth for change as the end draws near. In Jesus' holy name we pray with thanksgiving unto thee. Amen. Well, today we want to talk about justification as the method God uses to change us, to change us from being sinful to sin-free. The method he uses to change us from being in sin to being in righteousness. Yes, my dear people, we want to show you that according to the Bible, justification is indeed where the change takes place. In other words, the change from a person being a sinner to being righteous is called justification in the Bible. And justification because it means rightification. In other words, rightifying something correcting it, making it function properly. If it is broken, you find what is the problem, you fix the problem that the thing can work properly. And our problem, the problem that causes us to sin, that problem is fixed by justification. Yes, my dear people, this is what we want to talk about today. Now, using the Bible to understand various truths, is a thing that is to be done carefully under the guide of the Holy Spirit with careful reading of Scripture and comparing Scripture with Scripture, as the Bible puts it, here a little and there a little. And when you combine them together, you get the most wonderful truths put there by God for all of us because we need to feed on the Word of God. Yes, my dear people. The average human being, the average person need to feed on the Word of God. We all take lessons of wisdom. We all take words of wisdom from people. People give us wise statements. We get wise statements in the press. We get wise statements on the internet. And sometimes you just hear people talking and we pick up a wise statement. But here you have a book given to us by God, by his providence, by his working over thousands of years. And this book has what we call the epitome and a big accumulation, a large accumulation of wisdom all of us need to live in this world, to preserve ourselves from wrong and to understand how God helps us. This is the reason why you need to view your Bible in a better way and that you need to make sure you have a copy with you. Today it is a book easy to get, but there was a time when it was so difficult that even owning a copy was against the law. That's how it was made by the Catholic Church at a certain point in time, so that governments would prosecute people and murder people for even producing Bibles. You know the great Tyndale. Tyndale was burnt alive with chains and Bibles on him, used to fuel the fire also. And what was his crime? He simply produced a translation of the Bible for the common people to be able to read the Bible since they couldn't speak Latin. But they had to speak in their language, which was Old English. Yes, my dear people. And so people were murdered for the Bible. But now you have it available in many different translations. And many of them are corrupted translations. The best you can get so far is the King James Version. It is not perfect, but then there is no other version that is perfect too. All the other versions have flaws. But the best one of them all is the King James Version. And if you study it, God, through his Holy Spirit, will show you the truths that you need to help you progress. Yes, my dear people. So we want to look at justification. So we want to 
understand more about it from the Bible. We want to compare scripture with scripture. We want to see the beauty of the scripture. We want to take a look in a delicate way at scripture to understand what it is telling us. We start off with Romans chapter 8 and we would look at verse 6. I quote, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Let's just stop there and look at that verse. It tells us a person who is carnally minded is death. Death in two ways. They are spiritually dead. They are dead to spiritual things. They are dead to divine things. And they will also be dead eternally in the destruction of hellfire. So we have two things here. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But first of all, it is spiritual death that is being spoken of here. A person who is spiritually dead, dead to spiritual things, is carnally minded. And then we are told the opposite. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So we see a mind here that is carnal, and then we see a mind that is spiritual. So it means to say there must be a change from carnal to spiritual. If a person is to be saved, there must be a change from having a carnal mind to a spiritual mind. Because the two are the opposites. Yes, my dear people. And we are told for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Did you see that? So here we are told to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If a person has a spiritual mind, they have life, spiritual life. They also have peace, peace with God. They are not at war with God. But the carnal mind is at war with God. The carnal mind is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Therefore, there must be a change from being carnally minded to spiritually minded. Yes, my dear people. And the facts are that we are told that when you have the spiritual mind, you have spiritual life, and you have peace with God. You're not at war with God. So this scripture becomes like what we call a foundation text to look and see what causes the spiritual mind. How do we get the spiritual mind? In other words, how does that change come from being carnally minded to spiritually minded? If we look at Romans chapter 5 and we read verse 1, here is what we are told. I quote, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you see that? We are being told when you are justified by faith, you have peace with God. Now, some people say that should be betterly translated. It should have a better translation. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we are having peace with God. It doesn't matter if you put it that way. The point about it is, once you have been justified, the results of it is that you are having peace with God. Yes, my dear people. So, instead of having the carnal mind, you now have the spiritual mind. Because to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So, since being spiritually minded is life and peace, look, you now have peace when you are justified. And if to have peace when you are justified, if you are to have peace when you are justified, it means you got the spiritual mind when you were justified. Yes, my dear people. So that justification gives you the spiritual mind. And this is the reason why you have peace now. So if you say, therefore to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Look, you have peace now when you are justified. The fact that you have peace means you must have the spiritual mind. So justification is what made the difference. Justification is what made the change. Therefore, justification is the gift of the spiritual mind. How do we know? Because when you get justification, you get what the spiritual mind has, which is peace. But not just only that, 
we are told that the spiritual mind has life and peace. So it gives you life also. In the same Romans chapter 5, we are going to read verse 18, but what interests us here is a last portion of that verse, verse 18. We read in verse 18, it tells us this. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Did you see that? Justification of life. Now a moment ago in verse 1, we were told, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace. And now we are being told, justification is the justification of life, meaning justification gives life. Yes, my dear people. But we are told to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yes, my dear people. So look, we see justification didn't only give us peace, but justification gives us life. So if justification gives us life, and justification gives us peace, then it follows justification must give us the spiritual mind. So the change that takes place in us is from justification, which gives us peace, which gives us a life. Yes, my dear people. So you out there, you say you want to change. You say you want to be different. You cannot change yourself. You cannot make yourself different. If you are to be made different, only God can do it. Because the Bible tells us it is God that justifies us. So it is God alone that can change you. But if you want God to change you, you have to fulfill the conditions. The conditions is you repent of your wrong. And you believe the truths of the Bible. You believe the truths of the gospel. The moment you do that, God justifies you. Which means he removes the carnal mind and gives you the spiritual mind. Yes, my dear people. And that process that action of God, that creative work of God, is called justification. And this is the reason why <clears throat> the person no longer has what we call the carnal mind, but now they have the spiritual mind. That's where the change takes place. Yes, my dear people. And even proof of it that the change or transformation takes place in justification is seen if we look at Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, here is what we are told. I quote, And be not conformed to this world. Did you just see that? Be not conformed to this world. It is of a fact that it is indeed the carnal mind that causes us to be conformed to the world. But notice what we are being told here. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Notice the word transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. End of quote. But notice the part we are emphasizing here. It tells us, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Notice this. If the person had the carnal mind, and now they have the spiritual mind, it means their mind has been renewed from being carnal to being spiritual. And notice we are told that's where the transformation takes place. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So instead of the mind being carnal, the mind is now spiritual. So the transformation there is what causes the mind to be now spiritual and no longer carnal. But if we are transformed by the renewing of the mind, and now we have the spiritual mind when we are justified, it means justification transformed our minds. It transformed our minds from being carnal to spiritual. This is the reason why we always t say to people 
that justification is transformative. Yes, my dear people. And in our church, we teach transformative justification because the change, the transformation took place in justification. Did you get that clear? But even let's look a little further because we are told being renewed, right? Being renewed, right? So in other words, be not conformed to this world, but we must be renewed. And notice again what it tells us. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, in other words, our minds need renewing. That's what we are told. Our minds need renewing. So then, if you have the carnal mind, your mind needs renewing. And when your mind is renewed, you get the spiritual mind. So that is why it is called transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let us look again at what the Bible says about renewing the mind. And we would look at Titus chapter 3 and verses 5 to verse 7. Here is what we are told, I quote. It says this, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Notice this, according to God's mercy, he is the one that saved us. And it tells us how? By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Did you see that? So we are saved when our minds are renewed. And we are told it is a washing of regeneration that does it. Regeneration means rebirth, the new birth. So this is being born again. So we are told it is the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. So there we go. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We are told it is a renewal that takes place by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that does the renewing. So when our minds are renewed or transformed from the carnal mind to the spiritual mind, who does it? It's the Holy Spirit. That's what we are being told. And that's why we are told here by the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Now we continue. Again, it says this. Titus 3, we look at verse 5 to verse 7, again, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that, being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Did you see that? Literally, we are told the renewing of your mind by the Holy Spirit is being justified. Yes, my dear people. This is the reason why it tells us clearly that being justified by his grace. So, in other words, we are being told here that the washing of regeneration the renewing of the Holy Spirit is by justification by God's grace. So when God justifies us by his grace, he literally renews our mind, which is transforming our mind, because be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that renewing of the mind means a change from having a carnal mind to the spiritual mind. It means you have life. It means you have peace. Yes, my dear people. This is what your Bible tells you. This is exactly what we are seeing here. And this is the reason why the Bible is telling us that we need to be justified. Everybody who have any problem with sin, their need is literally to be justified. Yes, my dear people. And this is the reason why that is what we preach. A justification that changes a person and that is exactly 
how the Bible presents it. Yes, my dear people. But you know, this justification is not only a New Testament teaching. Because some people like to say, oh, New Testament is different to Old Testament and so on. But when it comes to these salient doctrines, these salient teachings, there is no difference. Because the justification that we know now is the same justification in the Old Testament. It is the same justification of the past. Notice we are told here to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And we get life with the justification of life. We get peace, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace. Now if we go to Malachi and we look at chapter 2 and we read verse 5, here is what we are told in verse 5. I quote, my covenant was with him of life and peace. Did you see that? Remember, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So in other words, we are told here, my covenant was with him of life and peace, which means to say he had to have the spiritual mind. He had to have been given the spiritual mind to have life and peace. But to have life and peace means being given the spiritual mind. Being given the spiritual mind would mean he was justified. So justification is a gift of life and peace. It is a gift of the spiritual mind. Let me read the scripture again and read the whole verse. Verse 5 of Malachi chapter 2. Here is the Old Testament. It says this, My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. End of quote. Did you see that? So the person repented and believed. They had fear or respect for God, respect for his name. So God justified him. He gave him life and peace. And life and peace is the spiritual mind. When you have life and peace, it means you have the spiritual mind. So he was given the spiritual mind. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace. Therefore, justification, giving him peace, and justification being the justification that gives life, or the justification of life, meant that the person had life. So if he had life and peace, it means he had the spiritual mind. And if he had the spiritual mind, it meant that he was given to it by justification. So justification is the change that takes place. Yes, my dear people, look at so many scriptures showing this to us. And there are many scriptures that show it to us in different ways. We know for sure that justification is where the change came. And that's the reason why the person is justified or changed. Now, we can look at justification in another way also. We go to Romans chapter 6. And this time, we're going to look at verse 6 and verse 7 first of all. Romans chapter 6, verse 6 and verse 7. It tells us, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Did you see that? So we are being told the old man must be crucified, that the body of sin might be destroyed, so that from that time we would not serve sin. Because if you are serving sin, you are in sin. And if you are in sin, you are not saved. Because salvation is salvation from sin, or away from sin. So we are being told here that the old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed. These verses need proper translation. In other words, the old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be inactivated. That's the actual Greek. The body of sin might be inactivated so that henceforth we should not serve sin. 
Verse 7 tells us, For he that is dead is freed from sin. Did you see that? For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now the word translated freed there in the Greek is justified. Yes, my dear people. So it actually should read, For he that is dead is justified from the sin. That's the exact Greek text. So let's read it again. Let's read it over again. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be inactivated, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is justified from the sin. Did you see that? So this clearly tells us that the slain of the old man and consequentially the giving of the new man is justification from the sin of the carnal mind. It is justification. So that once the old man is gone and once we have the new man, it means to say that we are justified. We are justified from the sin. And this is what it is all about. Justification removes the old man. And this is justification from the sin. Now we need to look at this a little more. But our time is going. You need to look at this a little more. You need to understand more about this. But we want you to know this is how you use the scripture. We will talk about this in our next program. We will continue this discussion. But you need to understand that this is exactly how a person is changed. They are changed by justification. And this is how we deal with the scripture. This is how we use scripture. So, until then, call us at 625-0446. 625 and may God bless you. Until we meet again, in Jesus' holy name, Amen.